The Nigerian Medical Association threatens to review participation in COVID-19 fight if federal government goes ahead to invite the Chinese medical team. And some residents in the areas affected by the lockdown by President Muhammad Buhari cite hunger as reason for flouting order. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. A very warm welcome to you. Now, the plan to invite an 18-member team of Chinese medical experts by the federal government of Nigeria has drawn criticism since the announcement by Health Minister Osage Ehanire. The Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, has spoken against the plans, stating that the move is a misplaced priority and a source of embarrassment to the association and other health workers fighting the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. They say the government must rescind the decision. But what if they refuse? We're joined in the studio by legal practitioner Fidel Albert. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And via Skype, we are joined by the NMA president, Francis Fadile. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much, Fadile. All right, let's just uh, start with you. Uh, these Chinese people that um, the government is saying they have invited have some experience. They have somehow managed to contain the spread in their country and most countries they're applying the strategies that they have used your statement yesterday points to a lack of consultation as one of your concerns now aside this please explain why you believe the move is a misplaced priority and an embarrassment to your association well i think it goes beyond the misplaced priority and embarrassment to the association it is a security risk to the country, and it is a, an ill-motivated decision. Uh, it is very wrong to say that it is the Chinese government who is uh, bringing those uh, people. No, and uh, it is not true that the Chinese government decided to support the Nigerian government in taking care of uh, uh, coronavirus uh, infection in this country. What actually happened, as explained by the minister and the uh, presidential task force, is that we have some businessmen who are Chinese in Nigeria who offered to supply some material to Nigerians. And in that way, they have gathered about $100,000 uh, and while they said they are bringing those, uh, those gifts, they offered that they are bringing some people from China to come to Nigeria. And we say, look, if it is individual businessmen cherry picking experts and bringing them to Nigeria, I don't think it is good for Nigerians and Nigeria and the health sector for us to have such people, especially when we are doing well in, okay, um, in COVID-19 in Nigeria. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. Are you aware of the clarification given by the general manager of the National Orientation Agency that says um, the Chinese uh, medical team is not coming uh, to take over the management of the fight against COVID-19 pandemic but to share their experience. And his opinion is that this is a global pandemic and from wherever assistance comes should not be rejected. What do you say to this? So, so does that mean that anybody can go to any country and pick people who want to come and share their experience? The answer is no. What happens in this particular case is some businessmen bringing some Chinese who they have uh, captured as medical experts to come to this country. It is important for us to know that even if you want to have experience, you want to share experience, you share experience between those who are on and, and those who had passed through that as it is members of Nigerian Medical Association, members of the National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives are people who are on the ground. 
there had not been any deficiency that have been found. We have been doing our work consistently well. We have been trying everything possible to ensure that we, are, we contain that disease, uh, the, the disease. The contact tracing is going well. We have not gone too, too far. We have not exhausted all that we have. We are not called that we are overwhelmed. So who is bringing this? Why are businessmen bringing about 50 million naira coming to dictate to us? Meanwhile, we have Nigerians who had graciously donated up to 1 billion naira without any, dict uh, any dictation on who to who. Why do we need the Chinese in Nigeria? Do we now say that you can bring Bulgarian, bring Spanish, bring everybody to Nigeria? The answer is no. We are a sovereign nation. We are a sovereign nation. We can take care of our... Okay, I think the line went um, quiet okay. for a minute. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Francis, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, um, let me just move on to uh, the next question I have for you. Your statement, um, in the statement that you signed, you alluded to a coincidence between the spike in cases and the death toll of COVID-19 in Italy uh, with the arrival of uh, Chinese in what you say is the guise of offering assistance. Some are saying this is mere conjecture. What is the relevance of that coincidence you mentioned? Well, if we have a country that is taking care of its citizenry and we have someone who wants to help and the, and the situation becomes worse, you call it conjecture. Yes, it can be conjecture. Even scientifically, you cannot say this is cause and effect. But if it comes to Nigeria and the already stabilized situation in Nigeria becomes worse, Will you be happy that Nigerian medical, doctor, uh, medical practitioners or health practitioners who has had such effect before saw it and did not release it to us? It is important for us to know that as much as the care of these patients in Nigeria is on, Nigerian doctors, Nigerian nurses, Nigerian health practitioners are doing wonders. Can you imagine that up till now, the federal government has not been able to sit down and come out with a comprehensive insurance for those who are in the front line? They have not discussed, they have not put things in place. This is the sixth week that COVID-19 came to Nigeria. Nothing Nothing emphatic, nothing yes, on ground. I, I was, I was actually going to ask... Yeah, I was actually going to speak to you about that because you highlighted it as one of your major concern, the lack of personal protective equipment, um, life insurance, test kits, and so many uh, other issues. You also talked about test centers, inadequate number of test centers um, uh, across the country, and you're saying these are of more importance. I want you to speak more in this area. Well, I think it's important for us to know that our government has told us consistently that it is difficult for them to get all the personal, the personal protective equipment. But the question I want to pose to them, those who are donating this PPE for them, where do they get theirs? If they can get theirs and they can amass this, get them together, what stop our government from getting it where they have sourced their own? It is important for us to know that Nigeria is a sovereign country. Nigeria cannot afford to sell its rights because we have some group of businessmen who wants to give us 500 or 50 million and they are dictating that they have to bring their medical experts into this country. We have complained severally that this government does not have interest of health, of the, or, or interest of Nigeria in terms of health. And look at when we are in the middle of a pandemic that the Nigerian health professionals are doing well. You are still going ahead to say you want to bring people to come and give you um, uh, uh, experience. The experience in China is going to be totally different with the experience in Nigeria because we are different people, different scenario, different socioeconomic status, and different culture. So they should know that, and it is on this 
that Nigeria is so Nigeria Medical Association and its sister professional group are saying Nigerians can take care of issues pertaining to Nigeria. All right, before if I let you... Us gifts, we accept it, we'll be happy with them, and we thank them, but not to bring their personnel who we have, who we come and come and add little or nothing to what is already in existence. All right, before I let you go, I, I want to ask you this question. There is a worrying part of your statement. Um, something you said, you said that uh, the NMA would lose uh, to review her participation in the fight against COVID-19. Now, should the government go ahead with the invitation? Uh, some are saying that this is a subtle threat. Wouldn't that go first? Is it a threat? And won't that go against the ethics of your profession if you were to, for instance, um, um, go on a strike or something in this emergency, especially as the health minister has said, I mean, it was mere information. The Chinese doctors are expected in a matter of days. Well, I think if you want to look at ethics of the profession, the first thing that the Nigerian Medical Association did was to call all her members who were on strike to come back to work. And I can tell you up to now, we have so many doctors in FCTA who are, not, who are yet to receive salary for up to five months. We have some doctors who are still receiving fragments, percentage, even less than 15% or 20% of their salary, yet they are working. We are an ethical group of people. We will not bend uh, in terms of doing the right things. But if the government goes against the dictates of the ethics of the profession, we will tell them that the government will have to face the, the, the repercussion. It is the government that we should, talk, we should talk to. If they have lost interest in Nigerian, in Nigerian practitioners, let them import their, their Chinese uh, their doctors or whoever they want to try. Let them come and treat them. Because if Nigeria is doing well, we do not see reason why we want to go and replace a winning team. And that is the truth. All right. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your time Thank with you us on the program. Okay, I, I guess he can't actually hear me, so we're grateful for his time and look forward to having more conversation um, on the COVID-19 pandemic and their work. Let's get back to our studio guest. Um, Legal practitioner Fidel Albert, thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, actually learning. <laughs> okay, so what is your reaction to uh, his position in this particular matter? Chinese airspards and he has his position. Unfortunately, um, I have to agree uh, to a large, a large extent to what he said. You know, it beats me silly that in Nigeria we have to do things the way we do them. Um, well, it's not just about the activism or the advocacy um, that, that, that seems to be playing out, but it's just the rule of law. The Nigerian the medical practice, the, the, the whole industry, is, is um, established by law. In Nigeria, the, the Medical and Dental Pract Practitioners Act, um, you cannot practice medicine in Nigeria un unless you have or your name has been put in the register of, um, of practitioners by the council, by the medical council. Um, there's even a provision for restrictive uh, practice. If you have qualifications outside the country or if you're qualified in other countries and you want to come here to, for a, a, for temporary, a temporary period, the, the, uh, the council can look at your qualifications and then grant you some sort of um, dispensation to have a temporary practice. Now, why couldn't the government just respect that law and walk through the council to bring this Chinese in if it was necessary? Why do we have to unduly hit the polity or, or spend time arguing unnecessarily when the law is right there? In any event, section 305, uh, of the Constitution allows the president in times of emergency to, 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 to make proclamations to depart from the norm and do things differently. Which he has done. In emergency situation, but he did not include in his proclamation in regulation anything regarding suspending the provisions of the uh, 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 Nigeria Medical um, Practitioners Act to bring in 
um, uh, for, foreign expert, you know, if that has not been done, then he has to follow the procedure that is laid down, or the government would have to follow the procedure that is laid down. Well, they well, have to well, work with the council, yeah? Well, one would think that yeah. the Minister of Health yeah. um, should have known that there was need for a consultation with the people on the ground on the necessity to bring in uh, this expert. What worries you about this seeming lack of, you know, connection between the federal government and the NMA? Even other um, association, the uh, resident National Resident Doctors Association, so many TUC, everybody is against it. Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 everything Nigerian. That's how we do. We we build our house from the roof. We start from the roof and build down to the foundation. That's how Nigerians always been. Now, um, even the regulation the president made uh, on the 30th day of, of, of March, 2020, even the one Lagos State made on the 27th day of March, it, people had to complain and shout, you cannot shut down um, uh, institution you cannot shut down companies, you cannot implement a lockdown forcefully. Well, this is, it. I mean, this is, um, unprecedented. Yeah. No nation in the world has experienced something like this. And yeah. you can see that everybody is, you know, trying to do what they can to yeah. manage this situation. And for now, the only known way we can manage the spread is as painful as it is to maintain social distance and say everybody should stay home. It so is, it is. But, but in, do, in, really? in, 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 in all these countries you've mentioned, um, they followed a the procedure very quickly. They followed they, 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 they were laws they put in place quickly to take care of, um, to take care of, of, of the emergency situations. Um, there's really no, it doesn't take anything. Even when they did, the, they came up with the, with the regulations, they didn't waste time on it. It's just that we are not used to doing things the right way. Now, this is an opportunity where uh, Nigeria would grow capacity like we did during the Ebola period. Incidentally, the Ebola period was just, we, we tried to contain it within Lagos because of how the government of the day in Lagos State had acted quickly. And I must com commend the governor of Lagos State um, 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 here now. Um, he has done immensely well within his uh, his, uh, his, the, the capacity of the state to quickly respond, you know. But things have to be done properly. Things have to be done appropriately, especially on this issue. I mean, if the doctors should, should go on strike today, what do we do? Um, we have over 40,000 doctors in, in Nigeria. You, you are talking about 40,000 that can't even um, basically cover the, the country uh, with 18 doctors from, from China. But, but, but he, he, yeah. he, 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 okay, let, let me move the conversation away from um, what he says that yeah. they are able to. But the the minister, if we, if we take note of his, his statement, yeah. it was that these people will arrive in a matter of days. Yes. What if they refuse to rescind the decision and invite these uh, doctors? And then do you believe that this um, NMA and other, um, the NAD will go ahead and go on a strike, maybe at this very crucial time. Well, it, 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 it would be, it would be, I don't think it would be right for them to do that, but on the part of the government, it would also be very callous for them to go ahead with, with this. So it's basically you are, you are calling the bluff. Of, of the, to see what the doctors are gonna do. Um, you heard when the, 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 chair, the chairman, the president said that there are doctors in this country that have not been paid five months salary. So these people you're bringing in, what really is the, uh, the terms of engagement for them? You'll be shocked at the end of it that you'll find out that these people were paid millions, I mean Nigeria, millions of dollars. Someone would just write that they were paid millions of dollars. But meanwhile, you have doctors in Nigeria who are at the front line. Before the 18 doctors came from China or before they will arrive, who have been the people that have contained this pandemic? Who are the people that have kept our death rate? And do not forget that the, our efforts to contain this disease have been commended, even, by the, the even by the United Nations. So who are the people who have been doing this work? Is our homegrown. Listen, Nigeria doesn't have a lack of capacity. We have the human capacity to deal with anything. It has been the infrastructure, the motivation um, that we don't have. So you will see someone, for example, I mean, uh, that's why everybody is very happy. Because if it were something that our elite were able, they wouldn't be here. They would have flown out um, to, to, to go be treated outside. But because it's a localized uh, 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 pandemic, you know, and then it's also international, they, 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 are, on it, they, are, they are caged in here, basically. And that's so, why. So, so if they can't go out, 
together they are going to yes. import the doctors in to come treat them. <laughs> amazing, yeah. amazing um, line of thought. Um, we have little time left. Yeah. I'm just going to ask you about the. Um, even in this crisis, yeah. people think that good can come out of it, that it is a good opportunity, good in quote, for the government to review its relationship with the health sector, that this could be a way for them to have a rethink and begin to strategize on ways that you know it can be improved so that they know, like you rightly mentioned, I mean, it, a situation can arise when we die or we survive with what we have created. Listen, um, this situation has not been new to Nigeria. This is a situation where we have, for example, I'll give you an example, we have fire service. Yes, well, this is, this is, this is, this is uh, I don't quite agree that this is not a new experience. This is pretty new for how, us. How, how could it be new when it is the same, the very same methodology for fighting Ebola, Ebola should be the one, and we conquered Ebola here. We stemmed the spread in Nigeria. So why didn't we domesticate the, um, the, 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 the process, the mechanism, the infrastructure? Because you see, the problem is that once it goes, we relax, we go back to a decayed infrastructure, we go back to not taking care of the personnel. I mean, look at the doctor. But the global nature of yes. this, will yeah. it inspire any form of change? Because now, I mean, you can't go ask for an expert. The expert is struggling to survive. Yeah. So you can't go ask that expert, you know, come or you go to them. Normally, should inspire, but I am not very optimistic in, for Nigeria unless something just changes. I mean, look at the look at the complaints that the NMA chairman was making. I mean, it's been how many weeks now? Three weeks. No PPE. Nobody's talking about it. They say they can't access the the equipment. Adeboye donated um, equ equipment um, um, of several, running to several millions of dollars to, to, to some government. Where did he several buy it from? People, yeah. Several people have donated. Where did they buy it from? But the government cannot find to buy. Individuals are finding to buy. It's, it's, uh, you really cannot understand. And then when these donations make, are made, you don't find them in the hospitals. They find their way into private homes where they keep it and test themselves every day. You know, meanwhile, the people who should need it, I mean, you, you look at, you look at the, the, the TV, social media every day, there are people who, who are sick, have been calling NCDC, nobody's responding. No, but there have been, they've been um, um, I mean, the NCDC has come out to debunk some of these, and some of those people that actually came up have gone on to have their tests. Have gone on to have their tests? Yes. At what stage? At what stage? I mean, usually there are people who've been tested two or three times. Yes. I mean, there's a certain uh, young um, Nige Ni Nigerian artist who came back from abroad. Not only was he tested, but 30 people in his crew were tested. And yet there were people in the country who were looking for who to test them because they had the symptoms, nobody to test them. And then he went back for a second test and there was someone to test him. Where are these people who are doing the test? All right, I'm told we're out of time. So yeah. final thoughts on this. Uh, how should the government and NMA just find a middle ground? We are in a crisis and we need to move on. Well, I think that um, the federal government, we really need to grow our capacity in terms of the personnel. We really need to have a, 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 a blueprint to improving medical services delivery in Nigeria. It is at rock bottom, it's really abysmal. We need to find a way to, I mean, why should for Christ's sake we be complaining today about uh, doctors uh, association were not consulted, the medical council were not consulted before you're bringing in expatriate to practice medicine in Nigeria, even in periodic, when there is a law. I mean, these are things that should not be heard of even in this crisis period. Thank you very much for your thoughts so far on the program. Very grateful. Thanks. All right. We will take a break now. And when we return, some Nigerians are defying the lockdown order. Is death by coronavirus better than death by hunger? We'll be right back.